Mike Radich here, and I'm now joined on the phone by MMA up-and-comer Elise Anderson. Elise, how are you? Good, how's it going? It's going good, it's going good. Thanks for asking. Elise, you got a fight coming up November 21st at TWC Pro Series. How's training been going for the fight? Uh, it's been going really well. I've been uh, out in California for four weeks training at Glendale Fight Club with uh, Ronda Rousey's camp. And I uh, recently just came home for the last two weeks to get some training here, but I feel more than ready and um, got a good full eight-week camp in. So um, it's been going really well. Got been getting a lot of different looks, got a lot of different training partners. So I feel confident going into it. Was this your first time training at Glendale Fight Club, or had you been there before? Uh, I've been there before for uh, last year. Around this time, I was there for five weeks from um, one of my amateur fights. I went there for a camp just to try it out. So I went there five weeks and then decided to do my first pro camp with them as well. What do you consider your home gym? Because obviously you did this camp, the beginning portion with Glendale Fight Club, in the past, you've trained at Extreme Couture, and now, obviously, you're back home at your original gym in Michigan. So I'm just curious, what do you consider your home gym? Um, you know, I'm in between gyms right now. Uh, you know, it's a lot of politics, too. Uh, people, you know, it's hard for me just to stay at one gym because, you know, I think that, you know, one gym might have great jujitsu and another gym might have great boxing but you know a lot of gym owners don't like you know with the loyalty why you go to our gym so you know it's hard for me to say one specific gym because I, I want to learn from the best in every area uh, right now I'm training in East Lansing where I started actually with Matt Torres um, so right now you know I'd say that's my home gym that's where I started and but uh, I mean I've trained everywhere so I feel like I get good looks wherever I go. How many girls are there at Glendale Fight Club for you to work with? Because obviously, Ronda Rousey, she fights at Bantamweight. In the past, you've fought at Atomweight and Strawweight, so there's a big difference in weight between the two of you. So what girls are there for you to work with? Do you train with Ronda Rousey? Do you spar with her, even though there is a size difference? What girls are there at Glendale Fight Club for you to work with? Yeah, you know, she's helped me a lot, like, uh, just working with me, you know, I've got to grapple with her before. Uh, yeah, she is a couple weight classes above me, and, you know, they have a lot of uh, smaller guys, especially boxers, you know, that, you know, the um, they're professionals and 125ers that I get to go with a lot. Uh, Girls-wise, it's just me and Rhonda there, so... Um, you know, she still helps me all the time just because she's, like, a good person. And uh, whenever she sees me doing something, she always corrects me. And, you know, I feel very welcome there. So that, that was a great experience. Mm-hmm. How did you get to Glendale Fight Club? Did you just randomly email them or call them out of the blue and say, hey, can I come train there? Did you know someone who was already training there and they said, hey, you should come to this gym and work out with us? You know, how exactly did you get to Glendale Fight Club? How did that all come about? Um, actually, I was just leaving Extreme Couture and, uh, you know, didn't really work out with them. Um so I was just looking at gyms, you know, I came come, came from grappling, felt like I had a good grappling game and, you know, wanted to work my stand-up. So I just did research, you know, well, you know, Rhonda has a good grappling game and needs to work her stand-up. So where'd she go, you know, when she was up and coming? And that's where she started. So I uh, had my manager make some phone calls. And, you know, at first they said I sent, like, my fight resume in. And they said, you know, they get emails, like 20 to 30 emails a week from people wanting to come and train there, but they're really picky about. So I sent my thing in, and I got a call from um, one of the head coaches there, not Edmund, but one of the instructors saying, you know, that they were impressed and they think that I have a good future and that I could come and try my camp there. So that's how I got started and packed everything up, went there for five weeks, came back and fought and had a 34-second TKO, so it went well. Mm -hmm. 
Do you train at any other gyms out in California, or are you just at Glendale Fight Club? I just train there. I've, uh, they bring other people in, like Muay Thai fighters, and uh, that are more my size, like 105ers from different gyms, but that was the only gym that I went to. When you're out in California training, where do you stay at? Do you stay at like a fighter dorm? Because I know a lot of gyms, they have a place where fighters can stay when they're coming from out of town. Do you live in like a fighter dorm, something like that? Do you live in an apartment? Do you stay at a hotel for the five or six weeks, however long that you're planning on training at that gym? Where exactly do you stay at when you're training out in California? Um, I just got a one-bedroom apartment and just stayed by myself. That was close to the gym, so I just walked every day uh, to the gym and back. Mm. Who's going to be cornering you for your fight? Is it going to be people from GFC, or is it going to be people from home, or is it going to be a mixture of GFC and your gym that you train at right now back in Michigan? Who exactly is going to be cornering you for this fight? Um, but my coach from back home uh, is going to corner me just because, uh, you know, I feel comfortable with him in my corner for my pro debut, and um, he's worked on a team the last two weeks, and with Ronda's fight this weekend, it was a lot for them to come back-to-back and from Australia, so I said, you know, I'm going to have uh, my old coach corner me, and that's why I'm here putting together uh, my game plan now. This fight on November 21st is going to be your pro debut. Why is now the right time for you to make the jump from amateur to pro? Oh, you know, a lot of people even still say, you know, that I haven't had that many tough amateur fights and that, you know, I need to be tested or, you know, lose as an amateur, you know, to know what it feels like to come back from adversity. But I never felt that way I feel like you know the hard training is in the gym you know you get your ass worked in the gym so it doesn't happen in the cage so you know I feel like that I thought at World 5 to the World 5 title I thought 115 you know I thought it was 6-2 at 115 and you know I felt like I worked out my weight class as an amateur and if I'm willing to take this as seriously as I do then I might as well start my professional record because you know right now is the time for girls to get into the sport and get start getting wins under the belt. So, you know, I felt I feel like I'm ready. I feel like I put, uh, you know, even for amateur fights, I always put a six to eight week camp in, and I'm you know, clearing out the 115 and 105 division as an amateur, and I just want a challenge, and I feel like I'm ready to make that step now. You were six and zero oh as an amateur. All six of your amateur fights were for TWC, the promotion you're going to be fighting for on November 21st. You were their champion in not one but two weight classes. You were the champion at atom weight and at straw weight. So I'm just curious, was it a no-brainer when you decided to turn pro considering you were the champion and all your fights, all your amateur fights took place under the TWC banner? Was it a no-brainer that your pro debut would be for them? Yeah, definitely. It's in my hometown, you know. I uh, did all my amateur fights to them just because, um, you know, me and the promoter have a good relationship. He always has has my back and takes care of me. And uh, I decided when to go pro that I would do my first couple of pro fights with them and see how that goes. And, yeah, it's, you know, a big, good promotion, family-oriented. It's right down the road from my hometown. So, yeah, it was a no-brainer to go pro for them. You're fighting Chrissy Daniels. What are your thoughts about her as an opponent? Uh, you know, she's tough. She, uh, I know she hasn't fought in, in, fought in about a year. Um, you know, I've watched her films, her videos. She's about the same size as me, cutting about the same out of weight. Uh, but, you know, I just... I feel like, you know, she does have that life outside of fighting, you know, has a job, has kids, which is fine and everything, but this is all I do. All I do, you know, four to three or four times a day, I go travel, all I do is train. You know, I don't have, you know, this is my life. It's why I do everything, so I do have that edge, you know. I'm, she's been fighting for about five years longer than I have, so she might have the experience, but... 
I just feel like, you know, that this is a good fight for me, and it'll definitely be a good win for my pro debut. Mm -hmm. When TWC offered you this fight, did you know who Chrissy Daniels was? Were you aware of what she was doing before they offered you this fight, or did you have to go back and do some research, watch some film, and figure out who she was? Yeah, I knew about I knew about all the people that they were going to offer me. So um, I definitely chose wisely. You know, I didn't want somebody that was 0-3, 0-4, you know, for an easy pro debut fight. You know, I just, you know, she was the toughest one in the area. You know, she got a winning record. She's beaten the people that they offered me. She already beat. So I was going to, you know, I know that she hasn't fought in a year. I know she's been going through some problems and stuff. So I think that, so she wanted to get back in the cage, and I wanted a tough fight, so it was a good matchup. Mm -hmm. Is there any added pressure going into this fight? Because obviously, the amateur fights that you had, they contained a lot of valuable experience, and I'm sure you learned a lot of lessons, and I'm sure some of the stuff that you learned going through training camps and having those fights will serve you well in the future. But those fights, for the most part, and in the big picture, don't really count. You know, a lot of promoters don't really care if you were 6-0 and as an amateur. They really only care about what you do as a pro. So is there any added pressure going into this fight, or is it just basically another day in the office for you? Uh, you know, there's always, there's always pressure when it comes to, you know, a fight and being undefeated and having, you know... Um, I feel like I have a good reputation to uphold. You know, I train with the best in the world, and, you know, I don't uh, give up everything, and I don't leave my family at home for eight weeks at a time to lose. So I do feel pressure there. It does count now, you know. You can go 0-20 as an amateur, and, you know, they don't, they don't care once you go pro. So, you know, it's... it's a lot of pressure starting over fresh with a clean slate, but you know, on the flip side, you know, when these wins do start to come, they will count. You know, it's not, uh, it's not just, you know, all another amateur fight. So I'm excited, but at the same time, you know, you know, five, it's going to five minute rounds. So I've been preparing a little more for that. It'll be my first time fighting a five minute round instead of three which is really the only difference to me uh, preparing wise because uh, I take I took every amateur fight just as serious as I am this pro fight mm -hmm. what weight class is this fight going to be taking place in is it going to be at atom weight or is it going to be at straw weight this is at world five no oh. Going forward, are you going to eventually go up to straw weight? Because obviously the UFC has a 115 pound division. Are you going to go up to straw weight or are you going to stay and try to make a run at atom weight? What's your plan weight wise? Um, for right now, I'm going to stick to 105 and then obviously, uh, you know, see how it goes at the beginning. And then, um, I mean, the ultimate goal is the UFC, so they only have 115, so eventually I'll make that step up, but for right now, I'm sticking to 105. Hmm. Well, Elise, we'll end on this. It's a little segment I like to call Really Random. That's where I ask you a random question and you give me the real answer. Some of these questions are custom-made just for you, and some of these questions are generic ones that I ask all the people I interview. So here's the first question. Superpower you'd love to have? Uh, invisibility, so I could uh, watch my opponents train and see uh, see be there with other people are just, like talking about stuff I shouldn't hear. <laughs> nice, nice. Favorite movie? Uh, Despicable Me. Movie you've seen the most times? Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Favorite color? Green. Favorite guilty pleasure? Um, probably eating frosting out of the can. <laughs> <laughs> Celebrity crush. Giant Depp. Celebrity people say you look like. Actually, I, I can't remember her name. Though. Some Eva, Eva Mendez, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Go-to song when you're singing in the shower. Uh, Let Her Go by Passenger. Are you still dating Justin James? 
Uh, no, I'm not. Oh. Is he the reason why you left Extreme Couture? Uh, no. I uh, didn't really see eye to eye with the gym manager there. So, But I also would never date somebody that I was training with again. So it didn't work out. It was a lose-lose situation. Mm. Have you given up on all fighters? Dating-wise? Yeah. <laughs> I'll never have it again. <laughs> okay. Okay. At one point in time, you signed on to play college soccer at Spring Arbor. What exactly happened there? Because obviously, you're not playing there anymore, and you're pursuing a professional fighting career. So what happened at Spring Arbor? Um, I wanted to... I was training and playing soccer and going to school, and my coach was really, really supportive of me training. And he was at my first amateur fight. He's still been at every amateur fight. He comes to my pro fight. He buys a table for all my old teammates. But I just told him that I wanted, you know, to go into this 100% and training in MMA when I was like three and I was an amateur. So he uh, let me um, resign from the team, and I finished that semester. And I also wanted to go pro. I knew I wanted to go pro within a year, and I can't go pro while I'm playing there. So, because of NCAA rules, mm-hmm. so I got um, I got my paramedic license and decided to uh, go that route instead of doing a four year degree. How's your lip doing? Oh, it's better now. <laughs> Yeah, that hurt pretty bad, but yeah, it's fine. It actually healed within like a week, so I still train the next day. How exactly did that happen? Um, I was sparring, and someone you know rushed in, and I shot down, and when I picked them up on my double leg and landed, I had my mouth guard in, but my face hit their hip bone, so like my bottom lip, so there was that cut open from like my teeth and the pressure but I finished the round and there was blood everywhere but and I got the take down so I didn't really care I usually don't post stuff like that but I take the picture to send to Justin actually and I was like check this out and he was like that is seriously one of like the worst wrestling lips I've ever seen I was like alright I'm posting it (laughs) (laughs) what's your pet peeve? Uh, when people complain about uh um just when people complain in general, especially at training. Time period you'd like to go back and visit? Probably middle school. <laughs> but yeah, time period. So uh, when I was like 12, 13, just because I raced dirt bikes and I was racing dirt bikes. <laughs> now let's say you found a magic lamp and you rubbed that magic lamp and a genie appeared and the genie said he was going to grant you three wishes. What would those three wishes be? Um, to go undefeated win all my fights, that's one. Um, to uh, never get, uh, to never have to worry about money again for my family, yeah. For my family, never have to worry about money again. And three, um, for our health and my family and to not get injured. Three. Person you look yeah, up to the most. Oh. <laughs> Person you look up to the most. Uh, my mom, just because she's very strong and independent, and teaches me a lot. What's the best thing that ever happened to you? Oh, geez, the best thing that ever. Uh, probably starting MMA. When I was like. Finding MMA, finding jiu-jitsu actually is where it started. So probably one of the best things would have to be that the thing that first comes to my mind when you say that is that. What's the worst thing that ever happened to you? Meeting Justin James. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's really me. Um, the worst thing. Uh, probably, probably letting relationships you know, affect me too much when it comes to my career. What do you worry about? What's something that keeps you up at night? Losing. I say I, I, I probably my coach hates me because I call him at all hours of the night thinking about 
different stuff that we should go over the next day because I like had some weird thing of me losing or I like especially when it's like this period of time like three and two weeks out for my flight I probably am texting and calling him at all hours at least like three times a week like you know like what if this happens we gotta go over this tomorrow and you know I, I can't lose this I can't lose we gotta work on this but I, I have a reassuring support team so they usually help calm me down <laughs> What's your hidden talent? Um, I raced motocross, which not a lot of people know, but I did that for a long time, so I'm pretty good at it. I wish I would have kept with it, but there's too many injuries. Favorite TV show, and you can give me a couple if you can't narrow it down to one, but favorite TV show currently on the air and favorite TV show that's no longer on the air? Um, Crazy Anatomy is the only TV show I watch, and I've watched it like nine times, and it's still airing, but I don't like any episodes. And, um, before that, probably America's Funniest Home Videos. <laughs> I used to watch that all the time, and I don't think that they have new ones anymore. <laughs> when Bob Saget was hosting? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Number one thing on your bucket list? Uh-huh. I really want to travel. I actually want to fight in Brazil. Like I, anywhere in Brazil, I want to have one professional fight in Brazil. That's how I look at this. Best advice you were ever given through life and best advice you were ever given through fighting and who gave it to you? Um, my best advice ever given through life would be uh, probably everything heals with time. Just because, you know, I've been in the dumps and I've been lonely and I've, you know, especially having to live by yourself all the time for these camps. And, uh, you know, you think that you'll never make it through it and you think that this is the end, but eventually it does get better. So even if I have to tell them that to myself every single day, I know I do. And then for fighting... Uh, I don't really know if it's advice, but uh, someone once always told me that, because, you know, one of my biggest fears is losing, that um, the, what is, like, the worst possible thing that could happen if you lose? And really, it's just, you know, no matter what, your family is still going to love you at the end of the day. The people that are supporting you, if they truly support you, no matter what happens in a cage, at the end of the day, they're still going to be there. They're still going to support you. And the people that are truly there will still love you, no matter what, if you win or lose. So that's been the best fighting advice. Last question. If you could change one thing about the world, what would you change and why? Uh, one thing about the world. Oh, I wish I could, like, call a helpline on this one. <laughs> um... <laughs> My mom's right here, I'll ask her. <laughs> I can do one thing about the world, I would be in I would have people be nicer and treat people better because I think that a lot of people, you know, don't, don't <laughs> always treat people nicely. Elise, real quick before I let you go, do you have any sponsors you'd like to thank and is there anything you'd like to say to the fans? Uh, yeah, I'd like to thank Cauliflower Culture, who uh, is a clothing brand that makes all my walkout stuff. Um, they're out in Las Vegas. They sponsor me. Um, so far, it's Fighting League um, that sponsors me, and uh, Dr. Howard for sponsoring me, and um, ODP Fitness, Corey Wirtz, who has helped, been helping me get in shape back here in Michigan. And um, now my new gym, the East Lansing Underground MMA, which is actually not my new gym, because I started there uh, for acquiring me for this fight. And I just want to thank everyone for, you know, continuing to support me, and uh, especially for my pro debut and helping me make this transition possible. And thanks for having me on the show again. Elise, thank you for taking the time to talk. I really appreciate it, and best of luck coming up on November 21st. Thank you.